Seven people were kidnapped by a mad hatter. Blue and pink hats were placed on their heads, and they were asked to guess which hats they had on. If at least four people guess correctly, the whole group is let free. If not, the mad hatter laughs at the whole group. It is a very harrowing laugh. In order to protect their identities, we refer to them as persons one through seven, and we replace their pictures with hats. For instance, this is how we depict person two when we don't know what hat they have on. This is person two with a blue hat and person two with a pink hat. This is their story. Hello and welcome to Fine Design. Today's video is on a hat puzzle that I really like for its simplicity. It's easy to analyze, and in turn the analysis guides our thought process. I could not find this hat problem on YouTube with a rudimentary search, although I did find other hat problems with gorgeous hats. I'll link one at the end of the video. As for our problem, let's start with painting a clearer picture of the situation. Persons 1 through 7, or I'll call them players 1 through 7, have hats placed on their heads. Each hat is colored blue with probability half and pink with probability half. Each player can see everyone else's hats, but they cannot see their own hat color. Each player has a private slip of paper where they write their guess for the color of their own hat. The Mad Hatter looks at their slips and sees how many are right. The players pass if at least four of the seven guesses are correct. The players are allowed to come up with a strategy before the hat placing starts, but cannot communicate after that. It's not clear how strategizing will help. After all, nobody knows their own hat color, and it seems like they want to guess it regardless of how they strategize. So let's start with a really simple, pessimistic strategy. Every player chooses their favorite hat color and guesses that. So here each player's slip has their favorite hat color on it. Player 1 likes blue, 2 and 3 like pink, and so on. In this case, 4 people have correct guesses and the group passes. But there are many ways in which the Mad Hatter could have placed the hats. Let's call these hat settings. In this new hat setting, if we look at how many guesses are correct, there are still 4. But in this other hat setting, there are only 3 correct and they all have to face the harrowing laughter of the Mad Hatter. What we are interested in is how often this strategy would succeed for the group. Each player has a half chance of getting the right guess, and their guesses don't take into account each other's hat colors. So it's as if each player is tossing a coin and hoping to get lucky. The chance of the group succeeding here is the same as the chance of tossing seven coins and getting a majority of heads. This is in turn the same as the chance of getting a majority of tails, since heads and tails are just two sides of the same coin. So both of these have a 50% chance of occurring, and hence this strategy works for the group exactly half the time. Let's look at this a bit more visually. There are 128 different hat settings. That's 2 to the 7 since each player has two possibilities for what their hat can be. For each of these hat settings, 7 guesses are made. These guesses are governed by the strategy. So to see how good the strategy is, we can look at whether each of these guesses are right or wrong. That's exactly what we do in this table. Each column corresponds to a hat setting. For instance, this column is this hat setting. In this hat setting, player 1 guessed correctly, player 2 guessed wrong, and so on. What we care about is how many columns in this table have at least 4 green dots. This is what we represent below each column, and as we reasoned, this strategy passes exactly 64 of the 128 hat settings. Now that we have some familiarity with the process, let's look at a strategy that does significantly better. In this strategy, everyone assumes that they have the majority hat color. For instance, in this hat setting, there are five pink hats and two blue hats. A player with a pink hat would see four pink hats and two blue hats. And as per the strategy, they would guess that they have a pink hat on. A player with a blue hat would see five pink hats and one blue hat, and would also guess pink. Five of them would be correct. So although nobody knows what hat they have on, this strategy coordinates guesses in such a way that if there is a clear majority, the majority guesses correctly. 
The only hitch happens when there isn't a clear majority. If there are four pink hats and three blue hats, or if there are three pink hats and four blue hats. Here, just like in the previous case, the minority sees a majority hat color, guesses that, and gets it wrong. But the majority aren't able to save the day, because they don't even see a majority hat color. They see three blue hats and three pink hats. This happens in 70 of the 128 cases. They are assured to save the day in the other 58 cases. In order to pass this hat setting, they all need to guess the same when they are unsure. Even if one of them guesses differently from the others, that makes at least four wrong guesses. One solution to this is to just always guess pink when unsure. The majority will all be wrong when there are four blue and three pink hats, but they will all be right when there are four pink and three blue hats. So 35 of the 70 unsure cases are passed, and only 35 cases are failed overall. That's a 93 out of 128 chance of success, or approximately 73%. If the same game happened with more than seven players, the chance of not getting a clear majority is even lower. For instance, if there were 101 players, the chances of there being 50 pink cats, which is the only cases in which this strategy would fail, is less than 8%. So it seems like not knowing what hat you have on isn't that big of an issue. You can still have a majority of the guesses correct most of the time. But can we do better than the previous strategy? Is there any limit to how good a strategy can be? Shouldn't the fact that everybody is clueless about their hat color mean something? Well, we're actually well equipped to answer the second question. Let's look at our previous strategy visually. As you can see, when there is an overwhelming majority, the strategy does really well, making nearly all guesses correct. But sometimes when there is no clear majority, the strategy does very poorly getting all of the guesses wrong. If we want to improve, maybe we can try emulating the good hat settings. But before that, let's understand how being clueless about your hat color affects this table. Let's look at player one. For every hat setting, there is another hat setting which differs only in the color of player one's hat. Player one will not be able to tell which setting is the true setting. In one of these settings, player 1 will guess correctly, and in the other, player 1 will guess wrong. This can't be helped. No matter what strategy is chosen, player 1 gets exactly one of these two settings correct. There are 64 pairs like this, and so player 1 is right in exactly 64 of the 128 cases. For player 2, the pairs are different, but there are still 64 pairs and player 2 is right in exactly 64 of the 128 cases. And similarly for all the remaining players. So no matter what strategy we choose, in each row exactly 64 of the 128 dots are green. This means that there are exactly 7 times 64 green dots in the table, regardless of which strategy we choose. Think of this as a budget. We have exactly 7 times 64 green dots at our disposal. And this is what I find so nice about this analysis. It completely changes our perception of what we want. Take these hat settings where the strategy does well. Now we see that these are wasteful. It would have been far better if they just had 4 green dots instead of hogging green dots from our budget. And hat settings where all guesses are wrong are still better than hat settings where you have only one green dot, since you're not wasting any green dots on lost cases. Our new mentality is that of an uninterested college student. We want to do the bare minimum to pass, and if we're not passing, we might as well not even try at all. Now how do we get the seven players to do this as a group without communicating? We'll come to that in a bit. But first, even if we could pull this off and be like an uninterested college student, how many hat settings would we pass? If we start distributing four green dots each to the hat settings, we'd be able to cover 7 times 64 divided by 4, 
or 112 hat settings. So 112 is the maximum number of hat cases that a strategy could possibly pass. It is definitely not possible to do better than that. So can we pull this off and get to 112 past cases? Let's find out. To coordinate guesses so precisely, let's see some simple cases of coordinating guesses based on beliefs. These are really cute and surprising, and are also really useful. Consider two players with hats. Let's look for beliefs that they can share, such that if the belief is true, they know what color hat they have on. The belief, we have at least one blue hat, is a belief they can share. But even if it's true, it does not tell player two what hat they have on. On the other hand, a belief like, our hats are the same color, is a belief they can share, and if true, it also tells each player what hat they have on. Here player 1 believes they have a pink hat, and player 2 believes they have a blue hat. Their shared belief is wrong, so both of their guesses are wrong. But if the belief is correct, then they both guess correctly. There won't be a case where only one of them guesses correctly. On the other hand, if they have opposing beliefs, then exactly one of them will have a correct belief and guess correctly, and the other will have a wrong belief and guess incorrectly. So we do have a nice way to accurately coordinate guesses. But we have more than two players. And in this case, the relevant belief would be something like, the number of blue hats is even. It tells each player what to guess. Player one would guess that they have a pink hat, so that there are only two blue hats overall and player 3 would guess they have a blue hat, so that there are 4 blue hats. Here the belief is incorrect, so they all guess incorrectly. If it was a correct belief that they shared, they would all guess correctly. Here too we can have opposing beliefs. For instance, if players 1, 2 and 3 believed that the number of blue hats is even, and the other players believed it was odd, then 1, 2 and 3 will guess incorrectly, and the others will guess correctly. One last feature we'll want is for some players to tell if some other players' guesses are correct. This is also simple. The belief shown here means that players 2, 3, and 4 believe that between themselves they have an even number of blue hats. The numbers 2, 3, and 4 below the belief is how I indicate which hats the belief is about. Without any numbers below it, it means it's about all the hats. Here their guesses would still be coordinated. And since everyone else can see the hats in question, everyone else can tell whether they guessed correctly or incorrectly without any communication. Let's call this a local belief between players 2, 3, and 4. We are now ready to see a perfect strategy using these beliefs. Since these beliefs take up a lot of screen space, let's write them like this. A blue even indicates that the belief is the number of blue hats is even. We tell which players share the belief by writing their numbers before the belief. And we tell which hats the belief is about by writing the relevant hat numbers below the belief. We need to be very cautious to ensure that if anybody makes a correct guess, we have to achieve exactly four correct guesses. So to start with, let player one use this belief. This is the same as guessing that their hat is pink, because their hat is the only relevant hat. If it is a correct belief, and everybody can see whether it is on their own, then that's awesome. We have one correct guess, and six people left to guess. We can ensure that three of them are correct and three are wrong by using opposing beliefs. But what if player one's belief was wrong? Here the strategy is quite clever and tells players two and three to share a local belief. This way, the strategy either regains the one guess advantage or else continues to do horribly. If the belief is correct, we have regained the one guess advantage. 
and the four other players who could see that the belief was correct can split their guesses with opposing beliefs. If the belief is wrong, then we have three wrong guesses. However, there are four players who still haven't decided their guesses. We get them to use a shared belief. If it is correct, they again regain the one guess advantage. Otherwise, they all get it wrong and they haven't wasted a single correct guess on a failed attempt. That's it, a really simple strategy. Either the group passes with the bare minimum of four correct guesses or the group gets all guesses wrong. Since there are seven times 64 correct guesses in the table, this means that this passes exactly seven times 64 divided by four cases. And so this strategy gets exactly 112 hat settings correctly, and we know that nothing better is possible. We use the cluelessness of the players to put the question in a better perspective. Then using that perspective, we laid out some special properties that we want our strategy to achieve. Then we used beliefs as building blocks to come up with a strategy that achieves exactly that. And that, in my opinion, is one fine design. I don't really know if there's anybody specific to credit for this puzzle. I first came across it in a class I took at university. I don't remember the exact context. Maybe it was just to say that following a protocol can be surprisingly powerful, even if there's no communication at all. As usual, I thank Grant Sanderson and the Manim community for the animation software. As I promised, a video ought to pop up which has hat puzzles with gorgeous hats. That's it for this video. Goodbye, have a great day, and enjoy this animation. Whoa! Yankee with no brim!